Hello again, peoples of the interwebs, it's the Lunatic back again with another Minecraft tutorial here for you. Today we've got a villager trading station that I've kind of set up here. It's a modular unit, you can uh, set it up in a row uh, with a bunch of others or in a curve. You'll see that later on down that way. Um, and it's, uh, it's not the most simple of things out there, and it's probably not the fastest due to the fact that it relies on transporting villagers through water in minecarts, which is kind of slow. But as you can see, it's got a pretty small footprint. Uh, each, mo each module, which is this big right here, it's 9 tall, 9 deep, and 10 wide. Now, each module is made up as of four mini-modules, and uh, we'll run through those in just a second here, of course. To quickly show you how it all works, I will... Uh, I guess I'll demonstrate it here uh, in some fashion or another. We, of course, have the villagers down here, uh, where you can get easy access to them without having to worry about uh, anything getting to them that's, you know, going to eat their faces like zombies, just with that half, uh, half slab gap there. Now, if it turns out you get one in your system that you don't like, you know, we got a toolsmith here, meh, whatever, you just pop them down and into your, you know, preferred killing method, and it opens up in uh, ready, rather, for a new villager. To get a new villager, I'll have to quickly select the correct thing here. <laughs> uh, first time using the save toolbars, they're very handy. But you just get another villager coming in with whatever method you so choose, and then they fall right in, shutting it off to move on to the next available circuit. If they're all full, it will, of course, uh, move on to the next module, um, as you can watch here. And as you can see, it's moved right along to the next module, where this time it will, of course, fall into the void, because who needs test villagers? Anyway, on to the tutorial part. We shall see how things go with that. Okay, for simplification of everything right here, I've got most of the modules built out already in sequence, so we'll just have to build a tiny bit together here. Now, as you can see, this first stage is pretty simple here. What we're going to do is basically build the drop mechanism. Uh, for that, we need this setup right here with these blocks, redstone dust, and a button on top. We place a fence gate to the side of it, and we want some uh, helper blocks here, just basically to make sure that nothing goes terribly wrong when we're dropping the villagers. Uh, the villager will, of course, sit on top of this spot right here, so we want to make sure that he's nice and snug in, and when we drop him, that he's not going to have any sort of deviations off to the side. Got to place an observer facing this away uh, for nice and simple something. Uh, yeah, reading, I guess. Uh, you always want to make sure it's facing the correct way, of course, and that's always a problem for me. But pretty simple for this first step. Let's move on to the next one. As we progress through, you will, of course, see spots where there are orange glass. Those are new ones added to each module. The ones that were in the previous module, uh, or uh, set, rather, will be turned to light gray glass so as to avoid some confusion as to what is new wall bits and what is old wall bits. Here we're going to build up some extra helper blocks again for the purposes of containing the villagers and surrounding them so that they stay safe and don't run into any issues. The other thing we're going to do is we are going to stick a string in front of the observer. We've got a block that goes on top of it with a sign on there and then uh, for this, for the end bit of the module, we're going to only go up two blocks here. On this first bit, we will add a block off to the side. Whoops, it is like that. And these ones right here, you just bring up two, so that they stick up one above this spot with the sign. So when you're looking at it, it should be fence gate uh, with a block behind it, block with nothing there, and then it'll be the observer with the string in front of it, and then a block with a sign on it. Nice and simple. No other particular changes to this module. I'd recommend just finishing this bit right here out so that uh, the next module is just a little bit easier. Next part here, we have another set of blocks in our inventory, as you can see. Some helper blocks and some glass blocks, just in case I end up needing those in a little bit here. Now, this part is the back bit. So this is the actual function part. Uh, the villagers, when they fall through and they land on that uh, string, they trigger the observer, which will trigger this part right here. So we're just going to build out a little shape like this. I don't really know what it would be. A C, maybe, if you're looking at it from the right side. A repeater on one tick. 
with a sticky piston facing upwards here. We're going to put a waterlogged cauldron. I put it on full. I don't know that it necessarily needs to be full, but whatever works. Uh, we're going to have a comparator coming here out of this block and into, whoops, it is, into a sticky piston. Now this is where I said this part right here would be helpful, especially in survival, as you can step up on that, plop that there, and then we'll need a block in front of that. Step four, probably. What you're going to do, I'm actually going to place no blocks here, but you're going to place a redstone block with a uh, powered minecart rail on top of it. If you do happen to be facing the wrong direction and you place down the minecart uh, track, then it will you know, be facing uh, the wrong way. All that you need to do is place down an extra helper block and place down another rail of any kind next to it, and that will straighten it out the way that you want it to go. It should hold up just fine. Now, at this point, I encase this whole spot right here, leaving the uh, block in front of the signs open entirely. Uh, you can, of course, put the hat sl half slab in now, but I wait until later to do that, just for simplicity of inventory management. Along the back here, I also run a full line of glass, and I put a sign down over here with a block of water. Uh, one before that first hole. That's very important. It has to be one before the first hole. As we are, we are relying on it reaching over to here to get to that final track, or rather to get the villager over to the track uh, without washing the track away. Now, as you see, it will pour down into this hole, but as the blocks push out, it'll update so that it's going over to the next one, to the next one, to the next one, and even if you, say, remove the villager from the first one, it will continue to flow across at that point. Not important right now, but in case you were worried about it, that is how that works. Step five, probably. We're going to finish out the top bit here. We'll put up one more layer of orange glass along the back, or you know, whatever blocks. Really, the glass can be any block you want, as can the iron. They're pretty much swappable for anything. I have no redstone power running through any of it. Uh, the iron is just there for structure and counting purposes, mostly, and the glass is more just to hold stuff in uh, and let you see through the design. So you can use anything you want there. Um, not a big deal at all. These ones right here, I would suggest using full blocks, just so baby zombies can't get in and cause issues, or perhaps uh, nothing will wash away or and it just hides the redstone better, I guess. In any case, occasionally you might run into an issue of desync where the you know you, you pass a villager through here, and for some reason the block doesn't close, or rather doesn't uh, doesn't open back up when the villager drops out. If that ever happens, all that you need to do is push this button, and it'll push that uh, which one who's it back down there, the cauldron. It's a pretty simple system to make. Uh, of course, we'll build one here together. All that you need to do is find that spot above this button. With the model that I'm going for, I'm putting it three above. So we got one, two, three blocks between uh, the floor and ceiling. You can go higher. You can bring it down lower, depending on your design, of course. Um, but with this one right here, I've just made it easy to run this across. Um, of course, you do need to have a gap of two blocks tall through here so that villagers can fit through Otherwise, you'll run into some issues. Now, it's pretty simple. We place a piston down here. We do want a piston between uh, all these ones right here, just like that, because otherwise these get stuck. Uh, these pistons right here, for some reason, they get stuck open through bud powering if just the redstone above them powers. So this right here stops them from getting stuck down, which breaks the whole system. Now, you do want to make sure, of course, that you use regular pistons here. Otherwise, they'll just push it down and pull it back up, which would not be great. Uh, so we put down that, we run redstone dust all the way along the top here, and we throw down a button for a good measure. Make sure that it works, of course, and we are good to go to the next little bit. So this is the final version. Of course, I have it set up here, um, just as it would be... Oh boy, I have to remember how to work these <laughs> saved things again. Um, this is basically how it was right at the beginning, but we'll run through it again real quickly from kind of scratch. Now, you get your villagers coming in. I actually discovered while making this tutorial that if you just pipe them straight in here, it works out really nicely instead of having to drop them in. Um, you can, of course, bring them up an elevator, but I would always recommend getting them onto a at least one powered minecart rail before ejecting them into the system. It just kind of pushes them into, water, into the water nicely. Um, of course, you can, again, drop them in from the top, but your water source needs to start here. It can't start back 
any, it can't start forward any. It needs to start right there. Otherwise, it causes a lot of issues. So, we'll send this guy in right here. You'll, of course, see how the starting process goes. As your villager falls in, that should push out, and that'll go on over to the next one. Now, I did some testing, and I didn't have any real issues with putting them in at, you know, speed. So long as they both make it into the water stream, it doesn't seem to cause any issues. Um, and I've not, in, in all my testing, I haven't had anybody go through so fast that they're able to make it in uh, the same hole. Now, it's possible that if you're dealing with a lot of server lag and you, um, you, know, you might have something like that happen, but it's pretty unlikely. Now, again, of course, um, we hit that button, drop them on through, it opens it up, and that's the part where I was talking about, um, you know, for instance, let's just say we dropped this guy out, and for some reason, due to lag or something, that uh, pink block there hadn't retracted. Well, all that we would have to do is push that button right there, and it would uh, push down this doohickey here. Now, for some reason, it didn't retract that piston. It might be another bud situation. Um, let me just see here quickly. Let me drop down that guy. Yeah, there's some sort of bud situation there. So if you do uh, ever end up needing to use that, you might need to install uh, some fashion of updater for these two. Um, I don't know for sure if, say... Uh, let's just see here quick. <laughs> Experimenting on the fly. Uh, that doesn't work. Uh, let's just see here. If we stick... Nope. That way. Ah, my face. Okay. That, I think, should do it. Let's just try it real quickly. Oopsie-daisy. And see what happens. Hmm. It doesn't do what I thought it would. Yeah, so if, I guess if you ever need to use that, you might need to um, wibble some wobbles. I was actually, I built this in Spigot originally, and that wasn't a problem. Neither was this bit right here. So it could be a vanilla bug, weirdly enough. Um... If you build it in spigot, you shouldn't have any issues. If you build it in, in vanilla, you might have some problems. But otherwise, it's pretty good. Um, now, uh, you might have some questions about expanding it, and especially going around curves. I believe that is the next step. Let's find out together. Hey, what do you know? I was right. <laughs> so, to expand it, all that you need to do is you basically build out the four modules, and then... You start the next module right away. So you'll actually have like the spare module area right here. Um, this is nice because you can make it into a doorway or you could perhaps have you know a nice spot to put down some shulker boxes for your trading. Uh, you put a crafting station in there, a little smeltery, something like that, you know, a bunch of things. This iron block, of course, needs to remain the same. The glass blocks are replaceable with whatever type of materials, materials you'd like. Um, now, I'm going to put down a villager on here. And I'm actually going to do another one due to reasons of science. And we're going to quickly talk about the corner. Now, uh, you know, this is nice and simple. You literally just copy-paste this whole thing and you build it again over here with that sign block, of course, starting right after the redstone block from the previous module. This orange stuff, uh, you could consider that uh, extra guff that just wasn't built in the other ones. Now, you'll see villager number one there pops on over the gap, nice and simple, and falls into his hole. Villager number two is going to make his way over to this corner curve, which is really simple to set up. All that you have to do is run him onto a slightly extended track, round a curve, and you just have to make sure that, of course, there is that one powered rail right there. He might make it around if he doesn't use one, but I wouldn't. I, I didn't particularly test that, uh, in great part because this is just a better module fit, in my opinion. Again, you probably could bring it in a little closer, and it'd be fine. Um, I would always make sure that any corner blocks are going around, like these right here, for instance. Either you don't have anything there, or you make them uh, transparent, because villagers can take damage going around corners, um, as, as can players, actually. Um, but yeah, he goes in there just fine. Uh, the next one will follow suit and go on over and over and over, and it is expandable as much as you want. As you can see, I got lazy and didn't feel like expanding it any further for the purposes of this tutorial, uh, figuring that the clone command is only 
able to do so much. I couldn't figure out how to get it to rotate, so I had to build that whole module by hand after cloning these ones in, because blarg. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I hope you find it useful. Uh, let me know if you have any comments, of course, down in the comment section. Uh, that is what it's there for. And, uh, yeah, if you would like to see any more tutorials on anything else that I've built uh, that you've seen throughout my series, you can always ask and see if it's my own original design. I'll be willing to hook you up with whatever uh, tutorial I can uh, with that. Otherwise, if, you, uh, if, if it wasn't for me, I'll, of course, point you to them. Usually, I try to do it in the video, but I don't always. So, of course, again, use whatever input method you want. Um, I don't see any reason to tell you about villager farms. You probably already have some good idea of that. Um, and this design doesn't require a god machine, as it's called, where you, you, know, you call a villager and you select it and say, hey, I would like to keep you or I just want to kill you. This is god machine and... Uh, training place, tra trading place rather, all in one. So you can kind of swap out villagers as you see fit. You get in a librarian that's pretty decent, and then you get in another one that's better. You can always kill that other one and start again, uh, trying to get somebody else for that slot. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions or uh, uh, advice on expansions or changes to this design, of course, again, let me know in the comments, and I will see you all next time as we stare deeply into the nitwit's eyes. Ta-ra, peoples of the interwebs. Ta-ra. Hmm. 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 Mm-hmm. Hmm.